For the next part, uh, we're actually going to try brewing specialty coffee itself. So specialty coffee in Singapore, I would say personally for me, something that's a bit more iconic would be an Ethiopian coffee because it's very different from the traditional Nanyang Rose that is a bit more robust, heavy and a bit on the bitter side. This one is actually very light, very floral, it's very sweet as well. It's a very complex coffee, I would say. So that's why we actually chose to roast this as a filter coffee um, because in a filter coffee you can actually taste a lot more of the coffee's original characteristics. So for this one we are using a washed Ethiopian. Uh, washed would be the process that it went through uh, at the farm before it was actually shipped out uh, to the different roasteries in the world. Uh, so for this one we are actually going to try doing the French press method. And this one is actually ground slightly coarser than the V60 method uh, because of the difference in the filter. So for this one as you can see it's actually a metal mesh. So if you were to grind it too fine like you would for a paper filter, some of the grounds might slip through the mesh and you get residue in the coffee. So this one will be ground a bit coarser, something a bit like coarse salt kind of a consistency. Yep. So French press would actually be one of the most accessible and fast free uh, brewing methods at home to enjoy specialty coffee. So for this we actually just need a French press, uh, a kettle with hot water, maybe a stirrer and the coffee itself. So for this, if you want to try, you can actually just try pouring the coffee in. So the coffee is inside here. Mm. Everything, right? Mm, everything. It's not like a special grind. So like, mm. if I want to buy like, French press coffee, I would mm. get cost cost. Uh, we call it like a cost grind. Um, okay. French press would be classified under a cost grind. So usually if you were to walk into a specialty shop, then you just tell them, oh, I'm using a French press, then they'll actually grind it a bit coarser for you. Yeah. So something like, uh, I'll say salt, you can see the grind if you want to. Hmm. So same thing, I'll actually just shake it just to even it out. Uh, same thing, we're using 15 grams here. So I'll use roughly a 1 is to 15 ratio. So I'll pour the hot water until about 230 grams. Okay. Um, the steps for it, I can walk you through. So what you need to do is actually just grab the kettle there. And same thing, just pour in 30 grams of hot water. Yeah, it's okay. okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So same thing, we're actually going to let it sit for about 30 seconds. Okay, so once 30 seconds is up, just go ahead and pour straight through all the way to 230. You don't have to swirl or anything, just pour straight in. Once you're done, you can actually just use the stirrer and give it about three stirs. Mm. Yeah, just to make sure that all the grounds are wet. Mm. You can just uh, throw the stirrer inside, it's fine. Mm. And after you're done, I uh, just have to cap it in. Just put the cap on and usually for me, I'll actually just press it a bit to make sure that uh, the metal mesh is below the water so any if there's any floating grounds or anything it actually pushes it down and submerges it all the way yeah so what we're actually going to do is just wait until three minutes oh, okay. yeah <laughs> uh, once three minutes is done all you need to do is just press down the plunger okay all the way uh yeah all the way you can actually push down like that all the way there's a bit of resistance but yeah just all the way down and you can actually just pour it out into the So once you're done, actually, for all the residue, all you have to do is just open it up, throw it away, and you're done. So it's uh, also quite fast-free, this brew method. Yeah.